All right. I'm here with Caitlin Carmichael, and we're here to talk about Roadkill. I love this movie. It was shockingly a ma massive surprise, and I think this is going to be a great start to 2024 when it's released. Awesome. That makes me so happy to hear. I wasn't sure if you had gotten to see the movie yet or just the promotional material. So that's super oh. exciting. Thank you so much. Yeah, I did see it. I was I was totally blown away by it and no pun intended. <laughs> but uh, my first question is, um, how did you get the role of the driver? Roadkill was actually a script that I'm so blessed to say that it fell into my lap, really. Our fantastic director, Warren Fast, reached out to my agents and my manager um, asking to get in touch with me to possibly send me the script uh, to hear my feedback on it and if I would be interested in playing the driver. And um, that's a very rare experience, you know, in the industry to have someone who writes a character and sees you as that vision so that's a, a huge compliment from them and I read the script it was filming in a very short amount of time uh, and I I love character driven stories um, unreliable narrator story is one of my favorites to not give away too much uh, and was really drawn to it so Warren was incredible to work around my finals week schedule I had a final from 6 to 8 p.m and then went to the airport got on a red eye got to Panama City Beach the next morning at dawn and drove straight to set to start the first day of filming. It was a whirlwind, but it was a blast. Again, no pun intended. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. I got to tell you, man, your character as a driver was very, very mysterious. I mean, well, you come off as this great character, you know, just looking for directions at first. And you share um, a lot of time with Ryan Knudsen as the hitchhiker. And I like the fact that Warren has his backstory first to open the movie and then you have all this you have this great chemistry with him you know as these two mysterious people who just meet on the road and what was it like working with ryan as your kind of like partner in crime on this uh, ryan knudsen is just amazing partner in crime that's like the perfect way to describe the dynamic i think because it's just a very interesting relationship that these two have that I don't think there's really been anything like it on screen before. Um, two people, different ages, different backgrounds, but at the exact same point in their lives, which is really interesting. Um, and he was just phenomenal to work with. Uh, he has such a dry sense of humor. So it kind of added on to his mystery just because he could say things and you never really know. <laughs> he was joking, but he's just incredible and so warm and inviting as a person so having to kind of distance ourselves from the friendliness uh, that we had offset you know it was fun to tap into those characters that's awesome and you got to work with horror legend danielle harris in one scene where she has this amazing cameo as the wait the diner waitress what was it like sharing the screen with her oh uh, what 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 would that scene be without her scream honestly like that is first of all iconic second of all um it completely makes the scene and she was just wonderful to work with as well i truly have nothing but the best things to say about our cast and crew our whole scene that day in the diner was so fun we filmed uh like multiple parts all throughout the movie in that one day and that really um it was early on in the shoot and that helped us kind of establish that tone that was going to be there throughout by having her and William Childress, who was also there um, working in the diner with her, who is the man that has a bit of an unfortunate demise and <laughs> not to spoil too much. But I think we see it in the trailer. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah let's and uh, let's just say I'm not going to lie. I was like, I thought it was going to go one way. It goes a different way. But I like the fact that when I at first glance, it's like you were just defending yourself because it was it was clear that he I looked like he was planning to attack you. So I get that, you, you know, you do get to beat the crap out of him in that one scene so i figured all right well she's just defending herself that's what i thought and then yeah, like yeah she deserves it go ahead yeah yeah and i gotta tell you you hold your own with the action scenes like you really did a phenomenal job and i like did you train did, have you, do you have a background or did you just learn for the film I've had a background in stunts i've been acting since i was three and a half um i worked on a series for 
three years right before filming this where I was doing a lot of broadsword training and other kind of stunts, but never armed stunts or working with firearms. So that was a lot of fun for me to get to explore for the first time. And it was so funny, my first conversation with Warren about it, um, he assumed that just because I was born in the South and he was like, oh, you've probably shot guns before. And I was like, nope, I grew up in LA. I'm a city girl. We don't do that around here. <laughs> so I actually collaborated with my stunt coordinator, um, Chris Gann from the series who I had been working on before. And I wanted to do a little pre-prep work just to make sure before I got to Panama City Beach and started filming and training with the firearms there that I would at least look like I knew what I was doing when I got onto set. And Chris was amazing. We went out to a ranch in Malibu and just got comfortable enough holding the weapon so that I could appear confident on screen. And you did. You did. You definitely, like I said, you held your own and you did such a phenomenal job with the film. And let's yeah. not forget, Warren is in the film too as the sheriff. I know. Like, talk about wearing so many hats. Uh, exactly. And then, but the one, there was, a, there was a creepy character in a way, and that's the deputy. Like, even from the first the first glance at you, you know that he's got like this little creepy factor, like he's got a little crush on you or the driver. And it's just like, that's kind of, that was kind of weird, you know, weird and added in a way, but kudos to him too. And then of course, Trent, Trent. second half of the film, which we're not going to spoil, but everything's all revealed and just like made my jaw drop on numerous occasions. And I'm not, it's just like, wow. Like, it's one of the movies that I've realized in the process of like watching the cuts, filming it, and then watching the cut and watching the finalized version that the more times you watch it, the more it makes sense and the more little nuance you notice within the narrative. And I think that just really attests to how phenomenal of a writer Warren is because he has this whole complex world built in his head and then the ability to kind of tell the story backwards in a way is really cool. And very, from a viewpoint standpoint yeah and and, a, and a smoothly as well you know it's not like i don't think he left anything out i think he had it all smoothed out like hand down bam and that's what made it work i think so too I, when watching it back i was so impressed by how the intensity and the action is quite literally constant throughout even if it's a slower paced scene something is progressing the plot even if the viewer doesn't realize it it is so action-packed for the entire duration of the movie it's insane it is and the big and the course the big twist is it goes left field like i thought i thought like when you look at the when you read the plot you think it's just going to be a straight up going this way but then it goes completely a different direction and when i said actually it goes off in multiple directions especially in the lat the latter like 20 minutes it really goes into multiple directions because it starts to make you question things and like all right what is really going on here and overall this I, this is the type of movie i like i like movies that keep me guessing like what's going to happen next and Same. this one definitely did it <laughs> oh that makes me so happy to hear so with that said with roadkill coming out what's next for you that you can talk about is there any new projects in the works First thing kicking off 2024 is Roadkill coming out, as you mentioned, first week. And then I have another feature film called Skill House that'll be coming out next year as well. It's with 50 Cent and Leah Pipes, some more, uh, another legend in the horror industry. So it's, I love and am really gravitated towards films that have high intensity and I'm just a sucker for all things horror. I love to watch them. It's my guilty pleasure. But whereas Roadkill is a, a slasher on the road we have some really high concept explosions as you see behind you in your background um this movie is a contained claustrophobic up close and personal gory horror film so opposite ends of the spectrum concept wise but both they're both terrifying features exactly and i'm i'm definitely gonna look out for that one as well thank you so much albert that that means the world so, guys, check out Roadkill on January 5th when it's out. And you got to see Caitlin here. She totally rocked in this movie. And if you're going to see a side of her, you never would expect in this movie. I'm going to leave it at that. Just leave it to your imagination until that movie comes out. When you see it, your jaws are going to drop like mine did. And Caitlin, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Thanks, Albert. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.